Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, advanced trinomial factoring. Okay, well, we've done these before. This is just a slight variation of this. There's a trick to it we're gonna have to learn today, but write the steps down, I'll give you in just a second, and then you know refer back to your notes, and you'll be able to get it in no, no time flat. So anyway, we know how to do these. Remember these? Trinomial, you factor that, and you look at that and you go, okay, that's two binomials, x and x, of course, what two numbers add to give you 11 and multiply to give you 28? And of course, the answer is 7 and 4. Boom, there you go. Okay, there's a method to that, all right? We're going to do the similar thing to this and with just a couple of different steps to this. And uh, what we're going to do differently uh, is you'll see in a second that the first, see, we're used to doing trinomials with a 1. That's what's called the lead coefficient, a 1, a 1x squared, 1x squared, and so on. So let's do this, and what's the answer to this one? I need two numbers. They add up to give me negative two and they multiply to give me negative 35. Well, it's gotta be a plus and a minus, but if it multiplies, you give me a negative. So what are the two numbers? Five and negative seven, there you go. Okay, same kind of thing. All right, we can make up a trinomial by multiplying. If you look at this, here you do it. Well, let's see, three times two is six. X times X is X squared, okay? Then we can go three X times negative three is negative nine x. Then we can go two times two x is four x, and then two times negative three is negative six. Then we just kind of clump these together here so we get six x squared minus five x minus six, okay? What we're gonna do is take one of these babies right there and go backwards with it and factor it. And it's a trinomial, right? It's got an x squared, it has an x, and it has a constant, okay? It looks just like these before, except for one thing, and of course it's be because these the ones we're going to do now, there's a different number other than one at the beginning of this, which means we're going to have to learn a trick. And this is the trick, so definitely go ahead and write these steps down, okay? All right, pause as you need to. So let's say, for example, here's a trinomial. It starts off with not a 1x squared, but a 6x squared, okay? Which we're going to have to figure out something about that. Here are the steps, and go ahead and copy these down. All right, number one, we go 6 times negative two is negative 12. We hold on to that number. All right, number two, what factors of negative 12 add to give us negative one? And the reason I chose negative one is because there's a negative one right there. All right, so what factors of the, this number times this number uh, <clears throat> add up to give you the middle number? Well, you tell me. What two numbers be multiplying together, they, they equal negative 12, and they also add up to negative one. It'll be what? Negative four and three, right? Okay, all right, so we're gonna rewrite the x in the middle as these numbers now. In other words, we're gonna rewrite, we're not gonna have six x squared minus one x minus two. We're gonna rewrite it like this. We're gonna say six x squared and a minute ago, remember, we had we said the two numbers that multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you negative 1 or negative 4 and 3. So we're going to go like this. Not negative 1x. We're going to write the same thing, but with two different things. So negative 4x and then plus 3x. And do you agree that this equals negative 1x like we, we have right here? That's all we're doing. We're rewriting this, okay? Minus 2. I'm just going to rewrite this to look like that, okay? Next step. Group the first two and the second two. So we're gonna kind of clump together the first two terms, and then we're gonna kind of clump together the second two terms. So we can just write parentheses to kind of tell ourselves this is what we're doing. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right. And if you want to, you can even write the uh, parenthesis first one outside the plus. It's not that terribly important. We just need to kind of know what we're doing here mostly. All right, and the last step is we're gonna factor and rewrite. That's all we're gonna do. And you'll see that these work out perfectly every time. Really quick question for you before we do um, step five, which is the last step. My question to you is this. If you have, let me get this into a blue or something. <clears throat> if you have this, let's say you have five times 10 plus three times 10, what's a simpler way of writing that? I mean, we know the answer is 80, right? 50 plus 30 is 80. But we can write, instead of writing 5 times 10 plus 3 times 10, we can write what times 10? 8, right? 
because we don't need to write, we, we can just write five plus three as one clump, that clump. No, we don't need to write 10 twice, we can just write it once, right? We're gonna do exactly the same thing right here. So let's actually try to factor out, look at this group right here. What can we factor out of six and four? Two, right? Okay, and then what can we factor out of x squared and x? Just x, right? Once we factor that out, what's left here? Six divided by two is three, x squared divided by x is x. Okay, and then minus, what's 4x divided by 2x? It's 2, right? There you go. Okay, plus, and then 3x minus 2. There's really nothing we can factor out of this other than just a 1. And then we have 3x minus 2 again. Now, if you notice, look at those two sets of um, terms in the parentheses, right? You see that? That is the same as that, which means this is being multiplied by that, and this, positive 1, is being multiplied by that. So there's no sense in writing this twice. Let's just get, get these two numbers here. 2x plus 1 as one set in parentheses, and then 3x minus 2 as one set in parentheses, and we are done. That's it. Okay. So in other words, one more time, you take the first number, multiply it by the last number. What do you get? Negative 12. Okay. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you that one? Figure them out. Ah, there they are. Negative 4 and 3. So we write, instead of writing negative 1x, we write negative 4x plus 3x, like this, which equals the same thing as negative 1x. Then we start grouping them together, factoring, and we'll always notice that once we factor, we'll get something times something, and then something else times a something, and these two somethings will be the same thing as each other's something, and not the same thing as these two somethings. This, this something won't be the same as that something, but this something will be the same as that something, or something. Okay, let's try another one. All right? Now, sometimes it won't be in, in nice, neat order, but we don't care. It's okay. Let's try this one. Let's put it in the right order first. So pause and copy if you need to. Well, the right order we need is we want the 2x squared first, right? Then we want the negative 7x. Then we want the negative 15. Okay, now we're in good shape. All right? So first thing we do is multiply what two numbers? 2 times negative 15, right? Well, that's negative 30. Okay, now we need two numbers that not only multiply to give us negative 30, but they also add to give us what? Negative 7, right? Okay, so what two numbers multiply to give you a negative 30? Well, it's going, it's going to be a negative and positive, we know that. And they also add to give you negative 7. That'll be negative 10 and positive 3, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is instead of writing this negative 7x, we're going to write it as, as two chunks, that and that. So we'll keep our 2x squared the way it is. We'll do, we'll do negative 10x, we'll do plus 3x, and we'll do minus 15. And by the way, if you go, oh no, maybe, uh, how do I know if I get these in the right order over here? The answer is, it doesn't matter. You could put 3 first if you wanted to. In other words, 2x squared plus 3x minus 10x, then you can do it that way. It doesn't matter. It'll work either way. All right, but let's start clumping here. All right, well, you tell me what pulls out of 2x squared and negative 10x. Obviously, it's a 2, right? And it's an x, right? Okay, what's left after you divide 2x squared divided by 2x is what? x minus what? 5. Okay, that's what we get, right? Okay, so let's pull this out. I got a plus something. What goes into 3 and negative 15? 3, right? What's left when you pull it out? X, 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. Well, lo and behold, look at there. Yoink, yoink, same thing, right? So all we need to do now is go, I'm clumping these two together right here, and I'm going to go 2x plus 3. And here, just one time is all we need to write x minus 5 because it's getting multiplied by both. So there we go, and there's our answer. And if you ever have time where you want to sit down and go, gee, I'm not sure this is right, you can always multiply these out and add the like terms and you'll get the same thing as you started right there. Okay, let's try another one. All right, ooh, interesting. Okay, well, let's try it. Okay, we need to multiply what two numbers first? Five and negative six, right? And again, we get negative 30. Now we need two factors of negative 30, which means one's gonna be a plus, and one's going to be a minus. Those two numbers here also add to give us negative 13. 
And you might think at first, what? I don't know, how can that be? Negative, wait, three and ten, negative three and negative ten. Wait, that has to be a positive. Oh, I can't do that one. Okay. Well, make sure you kind of fiddle around a bit. You got six and five, you got ten and three. And don't forget, since 30 is a, an even number, it can be divided by two, which is what we're looking for. It's going to be two and negative 15 this time. All right? Okay. So we can put this in any order you want. So we keep the 5x squared the way it is. We go, I don't know, let's just, let's reverse it. Let's put the negative 15 first. That's negative 15x. Then we have a plus 2x and then a minus 6. And I'll stop right there. Okay. That makes sense how we get those? Okay. Now we're going to clump these together. And again, if you did it differently, two plus two first and 15 after, that's okay. That would also work. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. All right. What goes into 5 and 15? 5. What goes into x and x, x squared and x? x goes. Okay. So you get 5x squared divided by 5x is just x minus what? 3. Okay. Plus. What goes into 2x and negative 6? Well, just 2 does, right? And you get, lo and behold, x minus 3 again. There we go. That and that. Okay. So we can just write this once. x minus 3, and then we can multiply it by 5x plus 2. It doesn't matter what order these two are in. 7 times 8 is the same thing as 8 times 7, so who cares what order it's in. Okay. So just in case yours looks different from the books, just make sure that you have the same two sets of numbers. Okay. All right. Let's try the practice problem. There are two of them. So try A first, pause it, and come back. All right, I got 2x squared. I got negative 11x. I got negative 21. All right, so we need to figure out what we need to multiply. We got 2 times negative 21. 2 times negative 21. All right, well, that'll be negative 42. <clears throat> okay, so we need two numbers in the middle here that add, excuse me, multiply to give me negative 42 and add to give you negative 11. That's not an easy one, okay? Not an easy one. But we know it's gonna have to be a positive and then a negative, okay? So we can at least go positive something and then minus something and then, you know, minus 21, okay? Well, the answer is, you know, you probably know seven times six or maybe even 21 times two, but those don't work. There is also another one, since this is a four and a two, the digits add up to 6, which is divisible by 3, so is four, negative 42. So it's going to be a plus 3 and a negative 14. So we'll do plus 3 and minus 14. Oop, that's x's. Okay. And again, let's clump. All right. So let's see. 2x squared plus 3x. No, not a whole lot of that comes out of there. Except for, let's see. That'll be 2x and then plus three, right? Okay. Well, look at this one. We've got a kind of like a minus one here. What can we pull out of this one? Well, we can pull out a seven, right? Okay, and then there's a seven. Okay, if we pull out a, let's say a negative seven here, we'll say 14x divided, the next four, there'll be two x there, and negative 21 divided by negative seven is positive three. And then there we go. We got an x minus 7 times a 2x plus 3. All right, just for the heck of it, look at this. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Negative 7 times 2x is negative 14x. And negative 7 times a positive 3 is negative 21. So these add up together to be negative 11x. So we have this as our answer which is exactly what we started off with right there. Okay. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, well, this looks uh, not so bad. First thing we're going to do is say that 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Okay, so we also need two numbers. They multiply to give us negative 6, and they add to give us what? 5. Okay, so it's got to be a negative and a positive. We know that. So what two factors of negative 6 add to give us 5? Well, it's going to have to be negative 1 and positive 6, right? Because that adds up to 5. So we just rewrite this. So 3x squared. And, I, you know, again, you can put the negative 1 first. You can put it second. Doesn't matter. I'll just put the 6 first, just for the heck of it. 6x minus x, then minus 2. All right. And let me just kind of go like that. And then we'll kind of group that together. 
and we can say, well, 3x, or 3 goes into both of those, and so does x, so we just have an x plus a 2, all right? And here is going to be a little bit different, okay? Now, if you look at this and go, oh, well, I'll just pull, you know, uh, uh, 1 out of that, and it gives me negative x minus 2, you, you should look at that and go, wait a minute, that's the opposite sign of both of those. So what I'll do is I'll pull a negative 1 out of there. If you divide negative 1x by negative 1, you get x. If you do negative 2 divided by negative 1, that gives you positive 2, okay? So that is the same as that, of course. Then we have a 3x minus 1, and then an x plus 2. And there you go, okay? Practice those. You'll get them. Make sure to follow those directions. Okay, see you guys next time.